Hey guys, it's Chelsea K right here and welcome back to another installment of the web series called Small Acts where I take seemingly small instances of pop culture and critique them through a feminist lens in an effort to shift perspectives. And in this episode, I want to talk about React to a commencement speech that left the entire interwebs in shambles. So let's take a look at what's going on in the world of women. So if you're not up to date, let me get you up to date as to what really happened. So sometime in May, we all know May and June are graduation seasons. And as such, different famous people, notable people are usually called on to give commencement speeches. And this is what happened with Harrison Booker. So he is the insert whatever football name position right here I think for the Kansas City Chiefs and they won the Super Bowl last year um, and so he was asked to give the commencement speech at a Catholic a religious Catholic college in Kansas called Benedictine College and it was there that he said some things that ruffled a bit of feathers but after doing some research though on who Harrison Butker is, he is known for having not only having um, Catholic beliefs but also portraying um, his thoughts in a polarizing manner. So using speech and calling on examples and <laughs> engaging in conversations that are usually polarizing and that is meant to quite literally ruffle some feathers so he is kind of known for um and he even said it in his in his speech you know known for ruffling feathers speaking his mind and i think that's what he also came to the commencement speech to do so let me pull up some information about what he said in his speech in his speech not only did he touch on like obviously what really got the internet talking which was women and how their vocation is being homemakers and wives and mothers but also he touched on um, pride and how much of like a scene celebrating pride was and how birth control and people thinking that they can play God in trying to choose when they want to conceive is also an issue he spoke about people living together pre-marriage as an issue and a scene he used the fact that he was in a place where the values that he has or he seems to have or wants to portray that he has is the status quo he used that to kind of really go all in and talk crap about people who don't really believe what he believes he even said that acknowledging that he knew his speech was not even political but polarizing he said that i know that my message today had a little less fluff than is expected for these speeches but i believe that this audience and this venue is the best place to speak openly and honestly about who we are and where we all want to go which is heaven and i feel like there we have it again a prime example of people using religion using christianity to like as an excuse for them talking bad and downright being judgmental against different groups of people and while researching i also thought how it was funny that the nuns associated with this with this college felt the need <laughs> to put out a statement on their facebook page and a part of it read basically them said um them not supporting the speech them saying it doesn't reflect their views and they also said <clears throat> in quotations instead of promoting unity in our church or nation and the world his comments seem to have fostered division quite frankly if you wanted to come and say all of those things because it was like a catholic school fine but at the commencement speech this is like something that's supposed to get the students like excited happy feeling proud of their commitments their achievements on getting an undergraduate degree but instead it was kind of like overshadowed by what i'm gonna talk about next which was like the misogynistic comments but first let's recap on 
who is a misogynist and what would misogynistic comments look like okay so the part we've all been waiting for the words that he said and i'm just gonna pop it up on the screen and read it so let's read this together so it reads for the ladies present today congratulations on an amazing accomplishment you should be proud of all that you have achieved at this point in your young lives i want to speak directly to you briefly because i think it's you the women who have had the most diabolical lies told to you how many of you now are sitting here about to cross the stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world but i would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world I can tell you my beautiful wife would be the first to say that her life truly started when she became living her vocation as a wife and a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in Bible class blah 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 became my wife and embraced one of the most important titles of all homemaker he goes on to talk about it a bit more about what he means what she means to him what he means to her and then <laughs> he talks about the, he also speaks about the role of men and what men um in this society needs to do to fulfill their role as women as men but the part about this that gets me is not that he said oh you know the women here today even though you have your degrees and whatever the most important title you have is wife and homemaker that in and of itself is bad <laughs> that he that you know like he even thought that but that wasn't the part that got me it was the part about vocation what vocation means is according to the oxford dictionary a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation let that sink in a strong feeling of suitability so that basically is that saying that women yeah we can do other careers but this is the one we're suited for this is the one we're going to feel at home in the best in most fulfilled in and I thought we had learned this being 2024 and beyond I thought we had learned to stop telling people stop telling women telling people period like what they should be and what's going to make them the happiest what's gonna make them fulfill what what's gonna make their life feel purposeful like that's the thing it's like okay you're saying that this is a woman's vocation versus what he goes on to say is a man's vocation you know he's saying oh to be an entrepreneur and to be like a leader and to be like a public speaker like that's his vocation <laughs> i'm like wow okay so that's the main part that got to me the fact that like in 2024 there's still instances of people telling women what we can and cannot do and it needs to stop anyways misogyny misogyny is hatred of contempt for or prejudice against women or girls it is a form of sexism that can keep women at a lower social status than men thus maintaining the societal roles of patriarchy were his comments misogynistic yes <laughs> all fun and games aside i know from that we could all tell like one is perpetuating sexism two it was misogynistic point blank period anything where we're telling people telling women because of quite literally your gender this is what you should do versus what you shouldn't do yeah go to the back of the line because it's 2024 and you got to go but what I did want to point out though that is me almost playing devil's advocate and I'm interested to hear your thoughts below is what he was right about and I feel like looking for the silver lining in this dark rain cloud that was this speech 
that he gave at Benedictine College was that how important it is for one you to not only like find your vocation but also find a partner that supports you he really made a case for how valuable it is in having a, a good partner that's going to support you that understands you quite frankly that loves you and that you have shared values with he low-key high-key accredits you know his success today to his wife his partner can we say that she does to him does she you know accredit whatever success that she thinks she has to him being her partner we don't know because we haven't heard from her but in an ideal situation the roles would be mutual and it would be an equal or as equal or as equitable as it could be of a give and take between the two parties man woman 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 man man like that's what it should be look at me finding the silver lining so this is that was that was what he was right about importance of like leaning into your vocation your purpose what you think you're suited for and then two finding a partner that will support you through and through because that is one of the keys to success you're either gonna have a good partner or no partner at all but you definitely don't want to have a bad partner that is going to end up taking away from what you could be doing that is it for the video guys please i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below i know this was a hot a hot topic but a quick one and check out feel free to check out any of my other small acts videos and commentary i'd love to hear your thoughts until next time with love from chills bye